Hello there and welcome back to my office. Thanks for joining me for this chat. Let's do some talking, right? I'm Dr. Albert Chung and I am your friendly proctologist. We are going to talk about a very hotly desired topic today, which is laser hemorrhoidectomy. <laughs> Yay! I know many of you are celebrating. Like, Dr. Chung, you're so slow. You talk so slow. Like, finally, you're going to talk about this. And, oh man, you know, your dreams have come true happy birthday so let's talk about it i want to give you the brief overview of how laser hemorrhoidectomy is done and then introduce you to some useful information to compare it with the traditional cutting and stitching hemorrhoidectomy you know like is it really that much better like what are the pros and cons when should i have this surgery done when should i seek it out and a laser hemorrhoidectomy surgery, how it's done is they take you to surgery, they put, usually they sedate you or put you to sleep. They find the biggest hemorrhoids, which are the big lumps, those things that are flopping all over the place, and it's like a mountain range, right? They start from the inside and come all the way to the outside as one big row. They put this laser fiber inside, kind of like a fiber optic, inside and stab it through the hemorrhoid cushion and then what do they do they drop the switch and electric you know, they turn off the heat with this laser and then it cooks the big hemorrhoid vessels from the inside now the amount of energy they use is not unlimited okay if you turn that temperature too high you start melting all the tissues which would cause a lot of damage so you can't do that much but a good amount so that you can shrink those blood vessels by scarring them injuring them and then you remove the fiber and you're done you can do that for all the hemorrhoid cushions that you see and it's a quick procedure you go home the same day brilliant stuff and um, today I want to compare that with the, the cutting and stitching version which we all know about right uh, when I try to compare these two types of surgeries, what I find is that there are a lot of bad studies out there, meaning poor quality. They don't really give you the intel to say this surgery, the laser, is definitely better than the traditional cutting and stitching one. All they mostly say is, yeah, the hemorrhoid laser surgery has less pain, less bleeding, shorter recovery time, and therefore it's a safe procedure and should be considered. That's really the conclusions that most of these papers come up with, which in all purposes, it's not helpful. You know, to know that a procedure is safe and can be used, that's only a part of the battle. The main, main thing is that if a doctor's gonna do something to my butthole, it better get rid of my hemorrhoid symptoms. Okay, that is the main key. Because like they said for the THD surgery, if I still have hemorrhoid problems after the recovery is done, I'm going to be mad because that means I need more treatment or my journey for hemorrhoid-free lifestyle is not there yet. And I still need to keep pressing forward, seeking out other doctors, blah, blah, blah. Allow myself to interrupt myself with... Revival XR, they're one of the sponsors of this channel, and I've spoken with the owners directly. And one of the things that's very impressive is that they've done their homework in testing every single one of these ingredients to make sure that you don't get allergic reactions from them. All of these ingredients have very low reactivity, and that makes, that's what makes this product so great and so safe to use. Uh, there's tons of ingredients here, okay, ranging from natural oils, organic oils, and Epsom salts, you know. We don't need to just have one thing. We can have the whole gamut, and that's what I love about this. Definitely put a few tablespoons in here, especially during your recovery from any procedure, from banding all the way to hemorrhoid surgery. And let's get on with the video. So there's one paper that I saw that was somewhat meaningful, okay? And a lot of these, again, there's just certain things about this paper that I really like and therefore wanted to present them to you because, again, meaningful stuff is what I'm looking for here. This was a double-blind randomized study, which is ideal 
in most study designs. However, this study only had 100 patients. So again, just like all the other studies out there, very, very small sample supply or sample size. And so not very meaningful. You got to take this stuff with a grain of salt. But what did they find regardless? They randomized them to the traditional cutting and stitching to laser and also mucopexy procedures. We're going to ignore the mucopexy because we want to just compare the laser to the regular hemorrhoid surgery. What did they find, okay? The two main things I want to present from this article is their primary outcome, which was recurrence of their hemorrhoid symptoms after a one-year recovery. This is what we want to be zero, okay? Ideally, we don't want any hemorrhoid problems after a surgery. They found that in the traditional hemorrhoidectomy group, the cutting and stitching, 0% of patients had problems or symptoms from their hemorrhoids. Great. What about the laser group? Well, they found 10% to have problems with their hemorrhoids. Not looking so good, but 10%, yeah, pretty small number, but again, very small sample size here. But that's not good. Because 10%, those 10% of people are now going to keep looking for hemorrhoid treatments. Okay, the second thing is recurrence of prolapse definitely no go if your hemorrhoids pop out again is that something you think is worth it after going through any surgery no matter how small the recovery yeah no what did the cut, traditional cutting and stitching they found that that was five percent of people had recurrence of prolapse in the laser group 15 percent okay no bueno not good in the THD video, I said 20% of people in one year get recurrence of prolapse. And I asked you in that video, if that were to happen to you, is that considered a success even though the surgery recovery was easier than the traditional one? And I'll bet you many of you said, hell no, that's not acceptable because that means you need another procedure because a hemorrhoid is sticking out. You know, that's not good. And so there's pros and cons with this laser surgery. I really want to make this video straight to the point. The pros are the recovery is nice, less bleeding, you're away from work less, you can get back to your working out and you're back to your lifestyle easier. But the cons are not so good about this surgery is that the results are not very durable. They don't last very long because I'm sure most of these people actually had great had great recoveries and probably felt good three to four months after it but then when you get to a year those results don't hold on you start to get failures and that is what's in my opinion unacceptable um maybe it's just my style but if i'm going to suffer through i'm and i'd rather have the one that's going to give me the better guarantee of the final result and that's for you to decide and so the other thing that was interesting in all my papers is that most of these surgeons will not do a laser hemorrhoid laser surgery for grade four hemorrhoids or significant prolapse what they call it so if your hemorrhoids are sticking out quite a bit they won't offer the surgery to why because it does not work you've already got 15 percent of patients in this study getting recurrence of prolapse what makes you think they're going to offer it to anybody with bigger prolapse the limit for the patients in these study were grade three hemorrhoids with some mild prolapse is what they said that was the maximum they didn't treat anybody with bigger hemorrhoids than that and so there is significant limitations with this procedure i understand it's super sexy with the less pain but the results mm, if you've got bigger hemorrhoids the results are going to suck and but the other con the other um point to that is if your hemorrhoids are not that big why are you getting surgery okay it sounds to me like Banding may be appropriate in that case, you know, maybe cutting out or removing an external hemorrhoid would be the better solution in that case. Do you need a hemorrhoid, laser hemorrhoid surgery? And see, I, I understand that, you know, everybody's looking for the newest and greatest, latest technology out there. But I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff is just marketing. It is just another marketing tactic to get you to spend their money there they don't care about you they don't even know what your hemorrhoids mean or what they even look like they just say oh you look like your hemorrhoids are big you should get a laser hemorrhoid surgery it's the best and newest thing you should get it 
and um, a lot of deception going on because you know with the normal hemorrhoidectomy surgery since the results are so good right you can get rid of your hemorrhoid symptoms if you could just control the pain wouldn't that everyone would go for it right because that's the one that produces the best results but what's the thing here is that most doctors are really terrible at treating pain they don't give you enough pain medication they don't spend the time with you on the phone and call me now and give you the tactics and really spend that time to get a successful recovery which is what i do for my patients because i want to make sure that you're successful i don't want you to be haunted and having nightmares crying all night long curled up on the bathroom floor that's not how it should be done and honestly every single one of my patients has benefited none of them have regretted it why because they made the right decision to do it in the first place their hemorrhoids were severely limiting their quality of life and then they get help okay they get treated they are treated like my my own personal patients and they get taken care of right they don't show up to the er because their pain is out of control no i control these things i make sure that things are you know things are taken care of right and here are some things that i want to share with you that i think is just the dirty shady part of medicine okay so i looked up hemorrho laser hemorrhoidectomy in my area i like doing this market research i want to know what's going on and what do i find lots of people lots of headings with laser hemorrhoidectomy laser laser but guess what one of these entries i found one was like touted this you know laser center in orange county and guess what i see there i see a picture of a gastroenterologist someone who can't even do hemorrhoid surgery put an ad for laser hemorrhoidectomy, okay? They can't even do that procedure, but that was what sucked you into that link. And then what do you find in this body of text on their webpage? You find a little bio of the gastroenterologist who can't even do a laser surgery, but you find that you think about banding and like infrared, which is not even surgery, okay? You can't even do anything about larger hemorrhoids. So it was purely a marketing tactic to get you to click on the link and then make you feel like you wanna call that office. But they don't even offer the technology. It looks like I, you know, I hate other doctors. I don't. I do like pooping on other doctors. I think I, you gotta be hypercritical of your own field. You gotta, that's the only way you're gonna get better. And I'm not certainly singling out any of my fellow colleagues out there, surgeons or GI doctors alike. But hey, you know, don't cheat people or fake, you know, try and mislead people. It's not right. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know, you know, if you're, if you're going to advertise something, make it genuine. Make it like you may make sure you're actually taking care of the patient and not just so you can grab their dollars follow through with the care and that's what i would suggest to you be very careful with doctors who are suggesting the laser surgery many of them don't know what this technology can be used for and therefore you may fall into the group with hemorrhoid symptoms even after the surgery is done and that surgery may not have been for you or they're over treating you they're doing a surgery for you when you didn't even need it in the first place but guess what laser surgery makes more money than a banding okay so these are the kind of things you need to be aware of get multiple opinions take your time and make sure you find somebody you trust i am not a fan of laser hemorrhoidectomy surgery because i think it's it is not beneficial it doesn't give the right results and if it's a hemorrhoid surgery a hemorrhoid size that's appropriate for a laser yeah there's probably other options that you could have gone for without doing a surgery in the first place so i like saving money where i can and then if you're going to need a surgery make sure it, you get it for the right reasons and it's done right with the right care afterwards so i hope that helps you and i hope that gives you a little introduction I want to introduce the sponsor of this channel, which is Revival XR. We've got a brand new packaging for you that's on sale on Amazon now. They've been gracious enough to offer a coupon. Just use the coupon Doc Chung. This is the best sits bath supplement that there is out there. And I promise you, you won't find one that's more comprehensive than this. It's got many organic ingredients such as the 
organic chamomile, frankincense, calendula oil, lavender oil, and all you need is just put in several tablespoons into your cyst bathtub for some real relief. I highly suggest you use it after a surgery or after a hemorrhoid procedure because this could bring you some real healing and relief. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you see you in the next one. Bye-bye.